in 72. Now, anyone over the age of 55 knows exactly what I'm talking about, for it was on this day, 50 years ago, that the most famous goal in Canadian hockey history was scored. Now, this is where I was half a century ago, folks, sitting on the floor at Danesbury Public School. Indeed, there I was with all of my classmates watching the game during school hours, no less, on a small 20-inch black and white television set. Now, there are some things in life that you never forget, and the dying seconds of Game 8 of the Summit Series, well, that was one of those things that I shall always remember. And yet, two things stand out about the 72 Summit Series some 50 years later. First of all, why oh why is the hero of that series, Paul Henderson, still not in the Hockey Hall of Fame? As well, we all know that the Summit Series was far more than eight exhibition hockey games. The narrative was us versus them, capitalism versus communism, democracy versus tyranny. And yet here's the thing, folks, a half century later, how democratic, how free are we in Canada of 2022 versus 1972? Allow me to go back to the studio and provide some analysis. Hard to imagine, but a half century has actually passed since that piece of vulcanized rubber left the stick of Paul Henderson and somehow found its way past Soviet Union goaltender Vladislav Trechak. Check out the video evidence, which never, ever gets old. Everyone is overcome by emotion. There is a realization, forgettable moment. Wow, that was the final exclamation mark on a comeback for Canada that was so utterly improbable given how shockingly the series started on Canadian soil. I say shockingly because this was supposed to be a cakewalk for Team Canada. By this point in time, Canada had stopped sending teams to Olympic hockey tournaments due to the inherent unfairness. Back then, professionals were ineligible to play in the Olympic Games, so amateurs had to be sent to represent Canada. This rule did not apply to the Soviets, however. Oh, sure, on paper, the Soviets were considered to be amateurs, but in reality, they were the cream of the Russian hockey crop. And so it was that a wide-ranging belief kicked in. Namely, if the very best Canadian players in the NHL ever took on the best that the Soviet Union had to offer, well, the Russians would be utterly annihilated. Come 1972, that thesis was finally put to the test with a summit series featuring four games in various Canadian cities and four games in Moscow. And just about every single sports writer back then predicted that the end result would be eight games to zero for Team Canada. It looked as though that prophecy was going to come true. In game one at the Montreal Forum, Canada scored two quick goals in the first period and the route was on. Um, not quite. The Soviets rebounded and when the dust settled, they had shockingly won the game. 7-3. to three. Team Canada would win at Maple Leaf Gardens. Game 3 ended in a 4-4 tie in Winnipeg. And in Vancouver, the Russians again prevailed with a shocking victory leading to a cascade of boos and catcalls directed at Team Canada from its Canadian fans in the Pacific Coliseum. And that led to perhaps one of the most famous interviews in Canadian hockey history. Check it out. As a team of outcasts head to their dressing room, 
One player remains on the ice. Phil Esposito is given the microphone to address a wounded nation. For the people across Canada, we tried, we did our best, and uh, for the people that boo us, geez, I, I'm really, I, all of us guys are really disheartened and we're disillusioned and we're disappointed in some of the people. We cannot believe the bad press we've got, uh, the, the booing we've gotten in our own buildings. And if, 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 if the Russians boo their, their players, if the fans, if Russians boo their players like some of the Canadian fans, I'm not saying all of them, some of them booed us, then I'll come back and I'll apologize to each one of the Canadians, but I don't think they will. I'm really, really, I'm really disappointed. I am completely disappointed. I cannot believe it. Some of our guys are really, really down in the dumps. We know, we're trying, what the hell? I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can and uh, they got a good team and let's face facts. But uh, it doesn't mean that we're not giving it our 150% because we certainly are. I think, uh, Phil, the disappointment is a natural thing because it, the whole thing was an unexpected thing. They, you know, we all live with the National Hockey League. We have all been so proud over the years how great they are. It's unexpected because of the press said that we were so good. Not one of well, us guys yeah, said no, we were good. No, no, no. This is the thing. This is the thing that I'm on behalf of the fans. I must say that uh, that uh, probably since everything is is relative. We know how good you people are. The people didn't realize how good the Soviet team was, and now we found out how good they are. I think we can appreciate how good is both teams are. But I'll tell you, we we love. I mean, every one of us guys, 35 guys that came out and played for Team Canada, we did it because we love our country, and not for any other reason. No other reason. They can throw the money uh, for the pension fund out the window. They can throw anything they want out the window. We came because we love Canada. And even though we play in the United States and we earn money in the United States, Canada is still our home, and that's the only reason we come. And I don't think it's fair that we should be booed. As I was doing that, people were yelling and screaming at, at us, calling me names. Communism is better, don't you admit it now, and all this other stuff. This is Vancouver. And guys out of the stands were yelling that communism is best, and it's supreme. That's when I really realized, man, we are in a war here. This is no game. This is war. Wow. Cue the goosebumps. Canada, of course, would go on to prevail. And you know, if you want to relive the 1972 Summit Series in text, I highly recommend Ken Dryden's new book, The Series. What I remember, what it felt like, what it feels like now. By the way, folks, please don't hold it against Mr. Dryden that a while back he was a liberal member of parliament. Ken Dryden strikes me as a classical liberal as opposed to a Marxist liberal toiling for Prime Minister Blackface McGroper. Now, here's the question given the Paul Henderson heroics, however. Why is this man still inexplicably not in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Lest we forget, Paul Henderson wasn't a one-hit wonder in that series. The Toronto Maple Leafs forward also scored the winning goals in Game 6 and Game 7. Talk about coming through in the clutch. And yet, for reasons that remain murky, the powers that be at the Hockey Hall of Fame, the same hall that once inducted Gilbert Stein, are of the opinion that Paul Henderson isn't worthy? Granted, Henderson's NHL and WHA career statistics from 1962 to 1981 are not Gretzky-like numbers, but who cares? It was Henderson's unforgettable goal in 72 that literally had Canadians dancing in the streets. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix. And in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never 
take a dime from Trudeau, just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.